all you gaming health nuts out there. Ultra healthy video game nerd. Good to see you again. Do you hate polygons as much as I do? Probably not. And you shouldn't. There are lots of innovative things that can be done with 3D graphics in gaming. I'm not so stubborn that I don't acknowledge that. But there's a special feeling that hand-drawn 2D graphics arouse in the spirit that can never be imitated by polygons, no matter how much time they spend modeling the 5 o'clock shadow on the main character of whatever new 3D first-person shooter they're making at the moment. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, I'm biased as hell against 3D games. But despite that, there are still a number of 3D games that manage to give me a meaningful gaming experience, and I still hold dear to my heart this very day. So, as for today's episode, I'm going to be introducing the top 5 3D games that get the Ultra Healthy Video Game Nerd seal of approval. Just for the record, games with 3D graphics but 2D gameplay won't be eligible for this list. Knights and Klonoa, sorry, but you guys are going to have to wait for another day to shine. So, with no further ado, let's get on to it. Number 5, it's... Wario World for the GameCube. Wario World is functionally Treasure's only 3D platformer, considering that Stretch Panic was, well, arguably not a complete game. Thankfully, they did manage to give us one stellar title that takes advantage of the third dimension. Wario World has super thoughtful level and boss design all the way through. While it is a standard 3D platformer, the character's attack mechanic feels more like the kind of punching combo you would find in a beat-em-up. In addition to standard levels, there are underground rooms which act as brief puzzles to break up the gameplay, and challenge areas that always take place high up in the air. I was never able to complete the very last one of these, so I never unlocked whatever bonus features the game had, but I've read that it would open up some games from the WarioWare title on Game Boy Advance. Even if you're a strict retro gamer like me, this one is playable from start to finish. Number 4, it's... Katamari Damashi for the PlayStation 2. This is one of the best ideas I've ever seen in a game that requires the technical specs of a fourth generation console or higher. You control a prince, at least that's what they call him. I don't know what the hell this little thing is. Anyways, he pushes around a little ball through environments like a house or a town. If you push the ball over an object that's small enough, you'll pick it up and it adds to the size of your ball. As you pick up more objects, the bigger you get and the bigger the type of objects you can absorb becomes. Super simple idea, immensely fun game. Not to mention that it has a colorful palette and just a hint of silliness in the character and object design. Well, the main character you control and his father King have the silliness meter turned all the way up. And the music is super memorable. The game had a few sequels and I've tried the second one on the PS2 and the one on the Xbox 360 but none of them were able to recreate the experience of the first one. Coming in at number 3, it's... Sin and Punishment 1 and 2 for the Nintendo 64 and Wii, respectively. I know, it's kinda cheating by giving one spot to two games, but I didn't want to use up two spots for two games of the same series. The games are basically rail shooters in the vein of Space Harrier, but there's so much more. The first game on the N64 allowed you to have completely separate control over your character's movement and the crossfire used to aim your shot, albeit in a somewhat awkward way that many gamers weren't able to appreciate. The sequel on the Wii made excellent use of the technology by building the game such that you controlled your character with the nunchuck and aimed your shot with the Wii remote. It's such an empowering feeling to be able to move and shoot freely of each other. In classic treasure style, the games are packed with thoughtful boss fights that really make you learn patterns and exercise reflexes, and both games have top quality soundtracks. I consider the second Sin and Punishment to be the last real treasure game. The games they made on the 3DS afterwards were based on children's anime, and they just used rehashed versions of the Bleach vs. Crusade engine. To me, they're pointless toys that are made just for the purpose of making a few bucks. Number two is the one and only Super Magnetic Neo for the Dreamcast. This is the 3D platformer Treasure was supposed to make but never did. Developed by Genki, 
This game features an odd little creation called Nio, or Niu Niu in the Japanese version, who can summon the power of magnetism at his will. Pressing a button will release either a north or south magnetic field around your character, which must be used to latch onto or repel away from other magnetic objects in the levels. It would really take a whole video to explain just how sweet this game is, so I'll just sum it up by saying it has colorful and well animated graphics, diverse level design, super playful music, and is challenging as hell. In order to fully beat the game, you have to satisfy three conditions in each level. First, find the eight pink coins. Find a hidden object that the VMU tells you about when you're close to it, and then complete a time trial. It's super hard work, and often frustrating as hell, but few games have had me playing non-stop like this one did. One really peculiar thing I'd like to mention about the game is that the soundtrack was done by Tease Music. They were mostly known for their soundtracks on the PC Engine CD, including some things that were upgrades of other games like Sidearms and Hellfire. Check out the music in World 4 Stage 1, which is basically a remix of Berlin's song The Metro. Before I reveal the number one game on this list, I'd like to give out a couple of honorable mentions. First of all, I almost put Sonic Adventure at number 5. Yeah, it's imperfect and frustrated me beyond my wildest dreams at some points when I was trying to get all the emblems. But the feeling of speed it gave me at the time of its release was something that Mario 64 just couldn't compete with. Another game that kept me playing up to the end was Bomberman Hero. I know, the levels are short and basic, but the world view and the music made it feel fun to play through and find all the extras. It's not quite top 5 material, but I respect it as a game. Well then, we've come to the number one 3D game. It's none other than... Mystical Ninja 64! Are you surprised? You shouldn't be. Mystical Ninja 64 has got to be one of the best transitions from 2D to 3D that any classic series ever received. While only one Mystical Ninja game came to the West on the Super Nintendo, there were actually four games in Japan for that system alone. It was an established series for Konami, a Japanese platformer that incorporated action RPG elements by having town sections in between levels where the players could buy things with the money they earned in the levels and see the story progress. The first N64 game took the series in the direction of a full-fledged action RPG in a free-roaming 3D world, which gameplay-wise could be compared to things like Legend of Zelda, except that now you are seeing your character from behind as opposed to from above. The game has everything any gamer could want. Huge landscapes, big dungeons, and well thought out boss fights, memorable and sometimes downright beautiful music, reliable control, and a genuinely enjoyable storyline that's a parody of itself. This game is so great, it makes me not care whether I'm playing it in 2D or 3D. The Mystical Ninja games, or Goemon as the series is known in Japan, always have first person robot battles for some of the boss fights. While these are a great idea, they take some time to get used to and can get pretty annoying towards the end. But that's okay. This isn't just one of my favorite 3D games, it's one of my favorite games of any generation. The balance between action and exploration is perfect, and it's just a beautiful game to experience. After seeing my top 5 3D games, you can probably tell that I haven't played very many of them. There are legions of 3D games on the PS2 and beyond that I've never even played. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to keep an open mind. But if you start bringing up first person shooters, be prepared for a flame war. Alright guys, that's all for today's episode. As always, thanks a lot for watching to the end. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.